Hey everybody and welcome back to Hatch 2.0. My name is Sue and I am from OML Embroidery and today we're going to be working with motif stitches and appliques and outlines and a whole bunch of things. Believe it or not I created this design in about five minutes. I played around with it a little bit but no background, no nothing. This is just with all of the things that come with Hatch. So let's reconstruct it and I'll show you guys how easy it is. So let's go to a new document layout. So we want to go to define work area and obviously 40 inches is absolutely huge. So I'm going to do it on an eight by eight hoop. So that's what I want to pick eight by eight. You can do it in a circle. If you have a circle hoop, you can also pick your color. Now you can show your work area or not. So I'm going to show it and I'm going to leave it in this green because that's fine. So that is our work area. Now, if you want to put up a hoop, you can. I don't find it necessary because I know this is going to be the right size. So the first thing we want to do is go to digitize and we're going to pick one of these cool shapes. Now you can do this with anything. I am going to pick a heart because I find hearts very difficult to draw. So I think it's uh, fun to do it this way. Now we want it to fit. We're going to multiply it so we don't want it too big or we don't want it too small. And what you do is the easiest way it, to constrain it. So you can hold down the shift key and it goes from the middle out, if you can see that. Now I'm going to hold down the control key and it's going to keep it the proper shape. If I'm not holding down the control key, you can make a thin heart, you can make a squished heart, you can do anything you want, but I want it constrained perfectly. Let go of the mouse and click and then let go of your key. So that's one. I kind of like it. I'm going to pull it down here a little bit. Although, you know, that's a little bit plain as well. So why don't we dress it up a little bit? Now I just hit the zero key just to bring this whole thing in focus. It's about the right size. We can adjust it later. So this guy's filled kind of with a tatami, eh, kind of boring. So let's change that why don't we let's change it to something a little more exciting so uh let's go to motif okay well that's not really exciting let's go to i think it was on black work too i found this i i know it probably isn't but i thought it looked like pumpkins i thought it was really cool change the color up I thought it was really neat. Um, so one of the new f features in uh, Hatch 2.0 is that we can use an alternate motif. So we can have more than one. You guys are going to have so much fun playing with this. And look immediately how that changed. Even the first one is pretty good. Although I don't like the spaces between there. So let's fix that. Why don't we? I know it's different than the first one I did, but you know what? This is all about creativity. So it's kind of fun doing it this way. So we want column. First of all, I want everything just just a little bit closer together. What I'm looking at is right here. I don't want that going too close. So for column, that's about that's about as good as we can get for that. So let's see, spacing, that's looking a little bit better. Offset, we might not want to offset. I would like to put a few more rows in this one. So this is kind of what I'm doing. And this kind of is okay down here. That's probably about as close as we want. You have to keep watching it because as you can see right here, we're kind of intruding on what I think is a pumpkin. So maybe we want to back off that a little bit. Although we can do an offset and we can move stuff around a little bit. See, and you can get it exactly how you want it. You have to play around a little bit, but look, I've put a pumpkin right at the bottom. This is looking better. It's moved away. We might want to offset it just a little bit more to see. I don't want to lose my pumpkin down at 
the bottom. But you see how that's changed? Now we should be able to change the row spacing a little bit the other way and bring it down so the circles are in between this space so we can bring it down a little bit more and this is why you play with it isn't that fantastic so now we have a lot more pumpkins and we have a lot more circles on it and the whole space is filled out i'm pretty happy with that um, the only problem that I see right here, I do see a problem and I don't know if we can fix it, but let's play around. You gotta, you gotta pay attention to what you're doing, right? So we want it up. That's how it's going to have to be a little more spacious, maybe even one more to push it up. See what I'm looking at is the line right there, there. Now it kind of matches in. Otherwise, it was up here and it would go over and kind of ruin the design. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I kind of like it. So, but it doesn't look really all that finished around the outside. So, all we have to do is duplicate it. So, that's number two now. And we're going to change it to an outline. Now, we have a delightful heart. Why don't we kick it up even further and let's go here applique convert to applique you guys loving this yet convert to applique now that's an applique however we got to move the order of it because that's going to look a little different we could actually do even better so you think as you go along we can break this apart and we can change it up so it is right i don't mind that there but it isn't quite right is it no let's go right here to break apart and now we've broken it apart so all we have to do is take our satin stitch and we put our stash satin stitch at the end so it's going to do the tack down uh, the placement it's going to do the tack down and then it's going to do our motif and then it's going to do are outside so now it's perfect and i think it looks really cute let's zoom out a little bit uh so we can see our heart yeah i think that's really cute really cute so now we've made it an applique with a cute little design with two motifs and we've put everything in the right order so i'm really happy with that so i'm going to go ahead and select the whole thing now let's go to create layouts now you can make any kind of shape that you want if you click on say copy reflect do you see that doesn't work on my workspace but you see what you can do that's cute that's really cute shape copy array it's still a little different, but if you move it around, you can come up with really cute ideas for it. I like that. Copy reflect. So it's opposite. We did that one. What I'm after is a uh, circle layout. I guess if you wanted to make them bigger, you know, you could do it this way and that would be cute. But let's go to circle layout and let's put them I think around like this now you don't want them to overlap because we don't want them to merge so I think that looks pretty cute so click it down there you go how's that for cute I quite like it I absolutely quite like it now I want to uh, change some colors here now I should have done this now this is this is as we go along I'm going to undo that because it's gonna take me a lot longer to do it otherwise so the other thing we can do that actually looks really cute is go up to applique and pick your applique fabric so let's see we can pick this is kind of like the the feel of it we can do leather we can I like this one I guess go to color do we want white let's do white or we can do a pale pink okay looking good now the problem is that it doesn't show but that's okay we can just put it like that it shows we know it's there I guess for this one we're gonna have to take our applique fabric off because it's not going to work so we'll put none and then we can see we know there's applique fabric so now I've changed the colors okay so we want to do a circle layout and we don't want them to touch 
too much. Perfect right there. I like that. Could have been a little closer. Let's do that again. Sometimes you have to do the circle layout more than once to make it look like I think I was a little bit off on that one. So I want it straight. That looks much better. That looks much better. And look how we're going. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to go auto center to work area. And now our whole design is centered. And I thought, you know what? That looks pretty cool. This looks kind of like a flower to me, I thought, on the inside, and it is close enough that we can make it work. But I also thought, instead of doing the ambience quilting, why don't we do create outlines and offsets? Because we know we've got extra things to do here. Now I'm going to bring them a little bit closer. So I think maybe 1.10. No, that's probably too close. So 15 is fine. And just leave them as single run. I'm going to change the color so it stands out. Include holes. No, I don't want to include holes. So there we go. Now look, isn't that fantastic? And I think you can leave it just like that if you wanted to. Or we can dress these up a little bit. They don't have to be spectacular. So we could leave the first one as a run. We could do the second one as a back stitch. And we can do the third one as a stem stitch. Now look how beautiful that looks already. Why don't we try a little motif on the first one? That is a big motif. I meant literally a little one. Okay, so black work. Whoops zero to get you back so black work no candle wicking perhaps there's only two of those yep that's what i want to do that's a knot i like the candle wick wicking of course you can space it out a little bit more if you want this is all about playing and coming up with something really cute i like that now if you want to fill that in just go to digitize and then digitize we want a closed shape and i would just kind of start here and we want you know kind of in the middle of this kind of working in the middle i am not a hundred percent sure if i want this filled in but we're gonna try and see what we like and see what looks better i kind of think i like how the outlines looked in the middle and we can make them fancier so basically i'm making a quilt square with no background image nothing just out of the blue ah cool so we don't want it satin stitch we want it to tommy stitch and what we're gonna have to do because see how it's sitting over top what we're gonna have to do is move that up so it stitches out before everything and you know we could leave it just like that we could change these let's try i even like the orange color we can try that as a scripture run we can try that one as a back stitch and we can try that one as Mm, what would we do? We could just leave it as single run, but we could also change the colors as well So everything shows up a little bit better and would look really pretty now I haven't done too much to this and I haven't used any Backgrounds or anything now. This is gonna look really pretty when it is stitched out um, as a quilting square. I think it's really, really nice. Now, to finish it off as a quilting square, we need to make a square because you have to know where to place everything. You have to know where to put everything. And I wanted an outline. I didn't want <laughs> what I did. So we're just going to make this fit. And this is going to be our placement line. So this is going to tell us where to put our fabric and where to put our batting. We're right on the edge there. I would suggest making 
everything just a little bit smaller, but we're just going to keep going with that. Now we want this one right at the beginning. So another thing that's really cool, look what we have down here. So instead of dragging like I did before, cause it's old habit, let's just click and move it to the top. Ha! <laughs> How awesome is that? So you could just do it first up. Let's put it a really weird color because we want it to to stop so we can put something in. So it's going to do our placement stitch first, which is right here. Now we want to duplicate that. And that went down to the bottom, but hey, just one click, we're back at the top. We wanna to change the second one to a different color. So it stops, put your fabric down, it's gonna stitch it down. You might wanna do a backtrack or repeat so it does it twice, uh, maybe a backtrack and then it is stitched down now nice solidly and then we're going to stitch out our applique placements and those are all one color so we've got that right this is our zigzag it's another color so we've got that right we are going to stitch out the middle part that looks like a flower which is right and then we're going to go ahead and stitch our motif stitches because our fabric is all tacked down properly and it's going to stitch all those final satin stitches on top and then our decorative stitches and that is how you make a cute quilt square here inside hatch embroidery software now this is just using shapes and some of the new features and everything just built right into hatch so be creative play with shapes play with your offsets play with all the new tools that hatch offers you so thanks everyone for watching i hope you guys like this video i hope you guys will get really creative too and and have fun doing this thanks everyone for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video